Hey, welcome to our class called Hearing God's Voice through Immersion Discipleship School. This is session three called Hearing God and the Bible. Now for the last several weeks, we've been using the book that I wrote called Hearing God as a guide for the sessions that we're going through. And you'll remember I talked about how each session is going to go with each chapter. So session one, chapter one, session two, chapter two, uh, and session three is chapter three. And that's what we're on today. If you don't have a copy of my book, you can go to amazon.com and type in Hearing God in my name. Or you can also go to bendixon.org and you can purchase a copy through our website. And uh, if, you don't, if you don't have any funds and you still want to read the book, you can email us and we'll send you a free ebook uh, through, through the email that you send to us. Make sure you indicate that's what you want and we'd be glad to do that. But here's what we're looking at today. When we talk about hearing the voice of God and we talk about scripture and how they work together, I know this, you know this, that this can be quite a controversial issue. It depends on the church background that you have, where you come from, what you've been taught. But I come across this all the time where people will say things like, you can only hear God through the Bible. And that's partially true. You do hear God through the Bible, but you don't only hear God through the Bible. But I think it's something that needs to be explained. We want to have a reverence for the Scripture, and we want to have a reverence for the Spirit of God who speaks to our hearts today. But we don't want to understand the different purposes that each one of those have, because the purpose of Scripture is not the same purpose that, the Holy, that we have for the Holy Spirit speaking to us. And Scripture actually does say this to us as we'll go through this today. So what I want to tell you up front is, is hearing the voice of God through the Holy Spirit and knowing the Word of God actually works together. And whenever it doesn't seemingly work together, there is something wrong. But there's never anything wrong with the Word of God. There's something wrong with the person who's saying that they're hearing the voice of God because they are compatible and they always work together. We're seeking to build upon what God has already said to us in His Word. And I would say to you this, you cannot hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to you if you're not willing to hear what the Word of God already says. If you don't know what the Word of God says, you're not going to have ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying because the Holy Spirit is always in line with the Word of God. I can, rem I can remember from my youth, growing up, I always had a reverence for the Bible. Now, I grew up in a Christian family, but we went to church here and there. But I remember I didn't believe in the Lord until I was 19 years old. But even before that, I had a reverence for the Bible. I, one day I opened up the Bible and I opened it up to the book of Revelation, which is, you know, still to this day, I still have questions about. But I just sort of read about harlots and dragons and end of the world stuff. And it kind of freaked me out. And I sort of had this unhealthy fear. I call it reverence for the Bible. And when I became a Christian, that fear turned into reverence and it, it turned into appreciation. Now I honor the Bible. I have a holy reverence for Scripture. I believe in the authority of Scripture. If you've been through our classes at Immersion Discipleship School, you know that C101 is called How to Study the Bible. And we walk through what the Bible is and where the Bible comes from. We walk through how to study the Bible how to utilize the study helps that we have today to grasp context and culture and all of that. And it's very vital, it's very important. We believe in the authority of Scripture. And so when I teach on hearing the voice of God, I would never want somebody to think that for whatever reason, we don't honor the Word of God as our foundation and that we would somehow allow what we say the Holy Spirit is speaking to us to usurp what the Word of God says already. No, we honor the Word of God as, as it is for what it is which is the forever voice of God for all generations, for all people, for all time. But that doesn't mean that we don't believe the Holy Spirit does speak to us today, because He does. It's just for a different purpose. And I was asking the Lord for an illustration one day, and as I was taking a walk, something that popped into my mind was the game of baseball. And I thought about how this sort of works. I love the game of baseball. Many of my friends do. My son does. And so I understand sort of the principles of how it works and what it's about. But at a major league level, MLB, they all play the game of baseball according to the rule book. There's a rule book that's official and it's standardized for every team, for every game, all of baseball. They all have to abide by it. So when they're playing a game, there's infield fly rules, how many pitches, how many at bats, how many swings, all of those things are standardized. Everybody has to play the game the same way by the same protocol. But every team develops kind of their own internal language because you want to develop a language on your team where the other team doesn't know what you're trying to say. For example, the pitcher and the catcher have their own language. So the pitcher will be looking at the catcher and the catcher will put down his fingers like a one, a two, or he'll somehow indicate to the pitcher what ball 
uh, or what kind of pitch that the pitcher is going to throw. And they want to do that in a way where the batter doesn't know and the, and the first base coach and the third base coach don't know so they can't communicate to the batter so that he's prepared. So there's a language. Even the first base coach and the third base, base coach have their own language to communicate to their team of when to run or when to stay or when to steal or when to go home. And each team develops their own language which isn't standardized. It's just a way that they communicate to each other in order to play the game effectively, obviously, to win. And I thought that while that's not a perfect illustration, it certainly is a decent one. We think about the same way the, the, Holy, the voice of the Holy Spirit and His communication and the Word of God, which is penned by people through the moving of the Holy Spirit, how they kind of work together. If you can think about the standardized MLB rule book is similar to the Bible. The Bible is the standards for all people, for all generation, for all time. It's the forever voice of God, every generation. It's all the same for all of us. The principles about who God is and who we are and the plan of salvation, all of that is mapped out in Scripture. And we need to know and understand that better in these days. But we also have a language that is the Holy Spirit who's communicating to us in order to live out or play the game successfully, live out our spiritual life, our Christian life in an effective way where we can do what God's called us to do. We can go where God's called us to go. And it builds upon what the standardized rule book already says. You see, they have different purposes. The rule book in baseball is given in order to play the game. But the language that each team develops is in order to play the game specifically and effectively. And that's their language. And I think the Bible is given to us to understand who God is, His plan of salvation, and all of these things that He wants us to know. But the Holy Spirit will speak to our hearts in our life and make things specific, mostly of what's written in the Scriptures already, and bring that to life in the 21st century, in our day, in, in our age, and in our context. They work together. The Holy Spirit is drawing us into a life where his reality is our reality. His voice is clear to us, and he builds upon the scriptures. What's important for us to know is if we're not seeking to understand the word of God to us, we're not going to have ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us as well. They work together. We need to honor them together. It's very, very important. I want to look at a couple different things together uh, some points and some subpoints, And the first one that I want to talk about is the Bible is God's voice. I want to sort of put this into the foundation of our conversation. The Bible truly is God's unique voice for all people, all generations, for all time. This book is what God wanted us to have. What's in it is what God wanted us to know. The Bible is a collection of books. It's actually a library of 66 different books written over a, over a period of about 1,500 years by 40 different authors, including three different languages over several continents. And it still maintains a continuity, a subject and structure, consistency of doctrine, uh, of doctrine and moral uh, teachings that all flow together. It's incredible. What you find in the Bible is multiple accounts of history, hundreds of fulfilled and yet to be fulfilled prophecies, ancient proverbs, poetry, important first century letters. This book is God's voice to us in our day. That's, that's where we stand. That's what I teach in Immersion Discipleship School. That's what I call Christians to believe. Without the Bible, we have subjective morality. We believe whatever we want about whatever we want. And that obviously doesn't pan out well. What we believe is the Bible is what God has given to us. It's His forever voice for all generations, for us, His people. I believe it says in Romans that that what was written from the days of old, talking about the Old Testament, was written down for our instruction upon whom the ends of the ages have, has come. We actually need the Bible. We, we need to know God's voice to us. He wants us to understand what He's written to us and for us. And as we seek to hear the Holy Spirit in our day, we must first be a people of the Word because the Bible is God's unique voice and we must understand that. Look at what Peter said, the Apostle Peter said, to affirm some of the things that we're saying. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19 says, So we have the prophetic word made more sure, to which you would do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. But know this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, for no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, 
But men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. Peter was writing this letter to establish churches to remind them of the authority that the scriptures have. Many false prophets had come to the church and they were saying, God said this and God said that and this is what God is saying. And Peter, in the midst of all that, writes this to remind them of how true the scriptures are, how sure the scriptures are. They're, they're not of men's interpretation, but men were moved upon by the Holy Spirit. And that word picture is basically like a, a boat, a sailboat. And there's no wind, and all of a sudden they were, they were moved upon. And the wind moved the, into the sail, and the boat was able to cross the sea. This is the idea, is that men were moved upon. The wind, the breath, the life, the Spirit of God filled them as they penned out the Scriptures. This is the idea that Peter gives to them about the Scriptures and how unique they are, how powerful they are. Paul told Timothy the same thing when he talked in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. He says, All Scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the men of, man of God or woman of God might be adequately equipped for every good work. This is what Timothy was hearing from Paul. Paul wanted Timothy to be sure about this. It was his last letter to his true son in the faith. I want you to understand this, Timothy. I want you to be sure about this. All scripture is God-breathed. It is the breath of God. This is from God to you, and you need to honor it as such. Think about that. If our mindset was just that, that we believed that the Bible was from God, that we really believed that it was from God to us, how would we handle it? I mean, I know theologically we think that, but we need to have our minds renewed to that very fact, to that very truth. And sometimes people ask me this question, well, what about the New Testament? We see that Paul was talking about the Old Testament. We know that Peter was talking about the Old Testament. But did those who wrote the New Testament, did they really know that they were writing Scripture? I've had that, that question before, and the answer to that is yes, actually. There are a couple places where Paul mentions that he is writing the command of the Lord. He says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 2, For you know what commandments we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. He's saying that there are things that I told you that were not my opinion, my interpretation. The things that I said to you, they were by command of the Lord. That means I knew what I was saying to you, what I'm writing to you, is by the authority of Jesus. Now that's not something that I tell people, okay? I don't stand up and say some kind of new revelation and say this is the command of the Lord and you need to obey it in the same way that scripture, that scripture is to be obeyed. If I said that, you would turn off this video, you would uh, resign from Immersion Discipleship School, you would leave my church if you go to my church. This is what would happen, okay, obviously. But, but Paul knew, he wrote 13 letters, and he knew he was writing by the authority and the command of the Lord. He says it again in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 8. He says, so he who rejects this, the, the various verses that he had already mentioned, he who rejects this is not rejecting man, but God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Now that's a pretty incredible claim. It's, very, it's, it's, it's as authoritative as it can be. He's saying, if you reject what I am saying, you are not rejecting man or me. You are rejecting God who gives his Holy Spirit. That is the, an, an authoritative claim at the highest level. Paul knew he was writing scripture and it's important for us to understand that because as he was writing this out, he knew uh, the kind of authority that it had. And we can trust in the authority of the Bible. When we seek to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, we're not trying to rewrite or add to Scripture. We honor Scripture for what it is. It's the foundation of our faith. It's the unique voice of God for all people, for all time, for all generations. That is what the Bible is. It has a specific purpose. But hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit does not have the same purpose. God wants to bring specific into our life what the Bible teaches us as general or principally. Now, the Bible gives us answers to all life. I mean, it is, it is our rule book, our, our guide for the believer's life, for a Christian's life. But there are a lot of things that aren't specific. Like in the Bible, it could be that it's, it talks about being a part of a local church. It says we're a part of the universal church, which is the church worldwide, but we're to be a part of the local church. Now, in our day and in our age, what church is that going to be? There are people that pray through who they're supposed to connect to, who they're supposed to be mentored by. The Bible says, make disciples of all nations. Well, how do you go about choosing whom you're going to do that with? And I believe the Holy Spirit walks with us. He guides us. He speaks into our heart and directs us into the things that the Scripture already says. And we're going to talk a little bit more 
about that as we look at this second point that I want to make, which is the harmony of God's voice. We see how these harmonize together and work together. Paul was a traveling missionary spreading the gospel in various regions. And as he was going about, there's something that happened in Acts chapter 16 that I want to read to you as it sort of describes what I'm actually talking about. This is what it says in Acts 16, verse 6. They passed through uh, the Pergian, or, the, or the, it could be said differently, and Galatian region, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And after they came to Mysia, they were trying to go into Bithynia, and the Spirit of Jesus did not permit them. And passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. And a man of, of Macedonia was standing and appealing to him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So putting out to sea from Troas, we ran straight course to Somathras, and on the day following Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is the leading city of the district of Macedonia, a Roman colony. And when we were staying in the city for some days, and on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to a riverside. We were, we were where we were, supposing that there would be a place of prayer. We sat down and began speaking to the women who had assembled. And if you know the story, this is actually where the church at Philippi began. It was where it actually was birthed. Paul knew the Old Testament. He knew the apostles' doctrine. He knew what we would call the Bible. He understood whatever the parts of the Bible that they had in that day, which was the Old Testament, the Apostles' Doctrine. He was, he was sure about that. He was certain about that. He didn't have any issues with that. In fact, he was on his missionary journey. This would be his first missionary journey. He's doing what he's doing based on the call and the command, the great commission of Jesus to go and make disciples you know, of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. He's, he's going according to Mark 16, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. He's doing what he knows to do by the word of God. But what's amazing here is you see the Spirit of God directing him. And this really, this verse is what convinced me and what convinces many, I think, in seeing how Paul was going about according to the word of God, doing what he knew to do in obedience to the word, but he was being led by the Holy Spirit as he was doing that. And that is really the harmonization that we're talking about, that God's Word and the voice of His Spirit work together in order for us to accomplish God's will. This is what we're about. And so as I'm talking to you about this, what's important for us to realize is that as we go about obeying the Word, you go about making disciples, you go about being a part of a local church, you go about discovering and discerning and deploying your spiritual gifts. When you do that, as you do that, you need to know that the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you, He wants to lead you, He wants to guide you, and those two will always harmonize together. So it's important that we have a reverence for the Word as it is for what it is. But we also are inviting the Holy Spirit to speak specifically to us. Remember in this passage in Acts chapter 16, Paul says that the, whole, the Spirit of Jesus hindered us from going into Bithynia and then he led us by a vision of the night into Macedonia. Isn't that an interesting thing to consider? In other words, the Holy Spirit, although they would you know, say, oh, we're going we're to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. So they're just commissioned to go everywhere. As they're going into that area, the Holy Spirit says, don't go here. And, and how did they know that it was the Holy Spirit? How did they know it wasn't the enemy? Somehow they were able to discern that it was the Holy Spirit leading them, telling them not to go there. Now they would have gone there and they would have done what they known to do according to the word of God. They would have gone there and made disciples and preached the gospel. They knew to do that generally. But specifically, this was not where to go. And that's important to know. The Holy Spirit will lead you, He will guide you, and He will show you not only what by the Word, what it is that the Word shows us to do, but where and how we're to go about it. The way that I look at this is the Old Testament, uh, the Bible is, is like a house. The Old Testament is the foundation. The New Testament is the framework and the house that is built upon it. And whatever the Holy Spirit says to us, will furnish the house. It will fit inside what the Holy Spirit has already spoken about through the Word of God. Remember, the Holy Spirit is the one who moved upon men to pen the Scriptures. He's also the one that moves upon us to understand the Scriptures. And He is also the one that moves upon us and speaks to us in order to apply the Scriptures specifically in our day and in our time. And we need to know that the harmonization of God's voice is always in that they work together. And the last point that I want to make 
is that these are also the same author. As I, as I further what I've already been telling you, many people will say this to me. They'll say, if you want God to speak to you, just open your Bible and read it. And that's, that's fine. I mean, we hear that and it sounds great and it sounds like it's a true statement, but it's really only partially true. And we know that because you can know the Bible and still not hear the voice of God. And you can say you hear the voice of God and not know the Bible and you can get way off base. They're the same author. And so to, to act like you can just open your Bible and hear God's voice is, is kind of a ridiculous idea, especially when you read the Bible, because there were a lot of people that knew the Bible really well, but when Jesus was standing right in front of them, they couldn't discern that this was the Son of God, who the Bible says in John 1 is the Word. And so what an interesting thing that that really, that really is. The Holy Spirit, again, through men, wrote the Scripture, and He helps us to understand the Scripture, and then He helps us by speaking to us, to apply the scripture in our context, you cannot do this apart from the author. You can know the Bible without knowing the author, but you can't know the author without knowing the Bible. And we need to remember that. On a Sabbath day, Jesus went into Jerusalem for one of the feasts, and he passes by a man who was ill for 38 years, and he heals him. The religious leaders, they go crazy because based on their interpretation of the Old Testament, this was unlawful. And Jesus begins to call into question their true knowledge of the word. And this is an interesting passage in John chapter 5, verse 37. He says this, And the Father who sent me has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice. Oh my gosh, this is just back up right there. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his form. You do not have his word abiding in you, for you do not believe him who, who he sent, which is Jesus. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. It is these that testify about me, and you are unwilling to come to me so that you might have life. The leaders that Jesus was rebuking, these were scholars, and even in their youth that they were made to memorize the first five books of the Bible. So here you have scholars who have memorized large portions of the Bible, or at least the Old Testament, and Jesus is telling them, for all of your learning, all of your knowledge, all of what you know, you still cannot discern what the scriptures are actually talking about. The scriptures are pointing to Jesus. Jesus is standing in front of them. And although they know the Bible, they don't know the author and they can't recognize, uh, they can't recognize the voice of God truly who is, who is right in front of them. Jesus is God and he's speaking right to them, right in front of them, and they can't recognize it at all, which shows us that you can know the Bible without knowing the voice of God. So if people say to you, just open the Bible and you'll hear the voice of God, that's not quite true. Now that doesn't mean that the Bible isn't God's voice. The Bible certainly is God's voice, but it's a book of life. It's a book of revelation. It's not just a book of history. It's not just a book we can manipulate and say what we want it to say, which is exactly what they did. So in all of their knowledge, in all of their memorization, they still could not understand. They still could not recognize. They still could not apply what the Word of God was actually saying to them. You can know the Bible and not know God or hear God, which is a scary, scary concept. So for us to be people that are not only spirit-filled, but led of the Holy Spirit, this is vital. It's vital for us to honor the Holy Spirit by honoring the Word first and foremost, but secondarily, we must also honor the voice of the Holy Spirit who will take that Word and make it alive to us and speak to us about how to apply it in our context. This is what we're after, and this is what we're looking for. So we believe in the authority of Scripture for, for all people or every generation. We believe that the Holy Spirit speaks to us within the parameters of the written Word. We believe that we must be people who study the Bible and depend on the Holy Spirit. And we believe that God's voice from Scripture takes precedence over what I think I might be hearing. We believe that the Bible and the voice of the Holy Spirit work together so that we would bear fruit and bring God glory. And I encourage you in this session to dig deep into the scriptures, to have a daily devotional life. As you read the word, let the word read you. This is vital. It is important that we put the word of God before us every single day because no matter how many times we've read it, we still need to allow the Holy Spirit to help us to absorb what scripture's truth is actually saying to us. And as we do that, I believe that we'll start to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit more and more and more in our life. I'm always concerned for people that spend very little time in the Word and say that they spend all of this time in prayer and they hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. I've heard a lot of people say and do wacky things in the name of the Holy Spirit over the years. 
And I've come to trust that people who anchor their life in the word are people that are truly going to be hearing from the voice of God throughout their life. And this is what we want to be about. Now, I want to close our session as I always do by reading you some chapter questions which you'll find in the book. But I want to ask you these questions. And if you, if you have a pen and paper, you can write them down. If you have the book, you should just study these after our session when we close out here in just a few moments. But the first question in closing our lesson is this. What is the difference between reading Scripture and hearing God's voice personally? Which voice has more authority and why? I think we answered that throughout the lesson, but I want you to think through that and I want you to write it out for yourself. The second question is this, how does the combination of knowing the Bible and hearing God's voice help you know what God is saying? Can you provide any clear examples? So number one, you answer the question, but number two, can you provide any clear examples where your answer would make sense to you and, and anybody that would read your, question, your answer? Number three, have you ever been taught that God only speaks through the Bible? If so, give that experience. Who told you that? Why did they tell you that? Did they give you passages to verify that? And also, do you feel like this is a biblical idea? Why or why not? Now, this is what I'm going to confront because certainly people have said this. You may have heard this, that you can only hear God through the Bible. I want you to confront that idea in your mind and heart because the Holy Spirit is speaking to us as we're looking at through all of these sessions in this class. Question number four is, why is it important to know the different purposes for the Bible and hearing God personally? Why is it important that there's a distinction or knowing that the Bible has a different purpose? Again, when you blend the purposes together, certainly you're going to, people would say that, you know, we're not trying to rewrite the Bible or add to the Bible. Well, no, we're not. That's not why we believe the Holy Spirit is speaking to us today. The Bible is written. The canon is closed. It says what it says. Its truth is contained therein. It's not changing. It's for all generations, for all time. But what is the Holy Spirit speaking to us about then today? So we've already kind of clarified that. But we, I want to make sure in this question that you clarify it for yourself. So why is it important to know the different purposes for the Bible and hearing God personally? And then, of course, question five, which we do every week. What encouraged you most about this chapter and how will you apply it to your life? As I close out, I want to pray for you. And this is what I want to pray for you about, a hunger for the Word of God in our lives. This is what we ask God for. But then secondarily, I want our ability to discern and hear the voice of the Holy Spirit more clearly in our life to be present. I want to grow in hearing the voice of the Spirit in my life. I want you to. And this is what we're going to pray about as we close. So, Father, I thank you for all of the students in this class. I thank you for everybody that will watch this video and participate even as they listen to this session. And we ask, Lord, that you would give us a hunger for your word. And I pray for that even more. I, I pray for an appetite and a hunger for your word that would far surpass what I've ever known. I want to dig into your word. I want to understand your word. And I want to apply your word. And I thank you that that is your voice to us today. But also, Lord, I thank you that your Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts. And you lead us and you guide us according to your specific will as it pertains to us personally. And I pray that we would have ears to hear and we would have eyes to see and we would learn to blend the two together and see how the harmony of your word and your voice work together so that we could accomplish what you set us out to do for your glory. Father, strengthen us, open our ears and our eyes, fill us with your spirit, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. I look forward to our next session together. Yeah.